How to knit a cable knit cardigan with chunky yarn. It's easier than you think and can be completed in just a few days. Exciting, right? In this video, I will guide you through a step-by-step -step process of knitting my most popular cardigan pattern, the Sequoia cardigan. Throughout this video, I will be sharing all the techniques and insider tips to help you feel confident at every step of the process. Together, we will create a stunning cardigan that's perfect for those chilly days. I have plans to create a similar tutorials for all my chunky knit patterns, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified when we will be released. To knit this cardigan, you will need some chunky yarn and a pair of 15mm or US 90 knitting needles and the PDF pattern to choose your size. Check the description below this video and download the pattern on Ravelry or in my Etsy store. Chunky yarn is an excellent choice, especially for beginner knitters. Its thickness allows for quick progress, easy stitch visibility and fix mistakes with ease. For this cardigan, I used the Crazy Sexy Wool by Wool and the Gang in color Mineral Pink. This wool yarn is incredibly popular and came in a range of beautiful colors. However, I have also prepared a list of four alternative options, including more budget-friendly choices. Drops Polaris, a natural yarn with muted colors. Knit Pick Stuff Puff, the vibrant colors and extra woolly feel. Soft and lofty Mila Mia Super Chunky Yarn in signature shades. Molly by Mayflower is made of lightly spun wool, which gives the yarn an especially airy feel. If you already have some chunky yarn and 50mm or US-90 knitting needles at home, let's check if it is suitable for our project. Start by casting on 12 stitches. If you are not sure how to cast on stitches, check out the link provided above. Next, let's work on garter stitch, a simple pattern of knitting all rows. You will find the link to the stitch above as well. Knit 12 rows to create a beautiful texture. Here's a little secret I want to share with you. I always leave the first stitch knitwise and turn the last stitch. This technique creates a neat edge for your cardigan. Once you have completed the 12 rows, it's time to cast off the stitches and check if your yarn is suitable for this cardigan or if you need to consider a thicker option. If you are unsure how to cast off stitches, you can find the link to a tutorial above. Now comes the moment of truth. Grab a ruler and count how many stitches you have within a 10 cm or 4 inch. I have 6 stitches. If you have the same number, congratulations! If you have 7 stitches, don't worry, simply knit the next size up instead of a recommended size in the pattern. If you have more stitches, you may need a thicker yarn from our suggested list. Choose one you like and come back to join us. All right. Enough waiting, it's time to start knitting our cardigan. If you enjoy this video and want to see more step-by-step -step tutorials, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Ok, let's get started. To begin, cast on a required number of stitches for your size using the circular needles. I will knit size small. Remember, we are not joining in the round, so keep the stitches in a straight line. Great, now that we have our stitches cast on, we will start by working a 1 by 1 rib for 4 rows, which will give us approximately 5 cm or 2 inches of ribbing. Row 1. Slip 1 stitch knitwise, knit 1 stitch, curl 1 stitch, and repeat this pattern until you reach the last stitch. Finally, purl the last stitch. I always leave the first stitch knitwise and purl the last one for the knit edge. Continue this pattern for the next 3 rows as well. Excellent! Now let's move on to the main pattern of the body of our cardigan. Row 5, 7 and 9 are all the same and I will show you how to knit the row 5. 
on the right side of the work, slip first stitch knee twice, then knit 3 stitches for the button band, even though we won't be using bottoms. Purl 2 stitches to separate the button band from the cable pattern. Knit 8 stitches. This is the first row of the cable pattern. Then knit X stitches for the back piece. Check the pattern for your size. Then knit 8 stitches again for the cable pattern. Purl 2 stitches. Need 3 stitches for the button band. And finally purl 1 stitch. The next row is row 6 on the wrong side. All rows on the wrong side, 8, 10, 12, are the same. Slip first stitch knit twice, knit 3. Need two stitches, purl eight stitches, Need X stitches for your size. Pearl 8. Need two stitches. Need three stitches. And pearl one. Then knit the rows from seven to eleven as I have shown you. Well done, let's check the width for the first time. You should know that you are on the right track. Fold the knitted fabric and measure the width when double it. If it is too small, start again with the next size. And row 11, which is the next right side row. We will begin by slipping one stitch knit twice. Knitting 3 stitches. Purling 2 stitches. And here comes the exciting part, the cable stitches. To perform a cable for front, slip 2 stitches onto a cable needle and hold it at the front of your work. Knit 2 stitches from the left needle. Then return two stitches from the cable needle to the left needle and knit them. Knit 
voila! Next, we will work a cable stitch called cable for back. Slip two stitches onto a cable needle and hold it at the back of your work. Need two stitches from the left needle. Then return two stitches from the cable needle to the left needle and knit them. After the cable stitches, we will continue by knitting X stitches for your size for back piece. Then work another cable for front. I will show you one more time. Slip two stitches onto a cable needle and hold it at the front of your work. Knit two stitches from the left needle. Return two stitches from the cable needle to the left needle and knit them. And once again work a cable for back. Slip two stitches onto a cable needle and hold it at the back of your work. Need two stitches from the left needle. Then return the two stitches from the cable needle to the left needle and knit them. Finally, purl two stitches. Knit three stitches and purl one stitch. Row 12 is the last row of the cable pattern and is the same as row 6. When adding a new skein of yarn, do it before or after the cable stitch pattern. This way it will be easier to weave the ends later without them being noticeable. We will repeat the pattern from rows 5 to 12, which includes the cable pattern, a total of 3 times. This will give us uh, 36 rows or approximately 30 cm or 16 inches, including the 4 rows of ribbing and 4 cable patterns. Let's check the length. If you would like to add extra length to your cardigan, you can repeat the cable pattern for an additional 8 rows, which will require one extra skein of yarn. Just make sure you have enough yarn before proceeding. Your cardigan is a canvas and you are the artist. Feel free to make it as long or as cozy as you desire. Once you have reached the desired length, it's time to finish the front and back pieces separately. Turn your work so that the right side is facing you and ensure that the working yarn is on the right side as well. We will begin by slipping the last X stitches for your size from the left side onto a piece of scrap yarn. These stitches will be reserved for the left front piece.
Next, we will slip the next X stitches in the middle. The stitches will form the back piece of our cardigan. Now we will leave the first X stitches on the knitting needle. So, at this point we have three separate pieces. The stitches on the knitting needle for the right front piece, the stitches on the scrap yarn for the back piece, and the stitches on the scrap yarn for the left front piece. Now that we have our pieces divided, we will start working from the stitches on the needle with the thread at the beginning of the row. We will begin with the right front piece. Let's focus on working the right front piece. I have my stitches with the yarn at the beginning of the row on the right side. We will work even to the pattern back and forth on the needle. We will start with row 37 and rows 39 and 41 are all the same. Let me show you how to knit the row 37. Slip one stitch, knit twice, knit three stitches, purl two stitches, Knit 8 stitches for the cable pattern. Knit X stitches for your size. And finally, purl 1 stitch. Moving on to row 38, 40, 42 and 44 on the wrong side. They are also the same. Let's focus on the row 38. Slip one stitch, knit twice, knit X stitches for your size, purl 8 stitches, Knit 5 stitches, and purl 1 stitch. Once you have walked to rows 37 to 42, it's time for row 43. Here is how it goes. Slip 1 stitch, knit twice, knit 3 stitches, purl 2 stitches, Perform a cable for front. Perform a cable for back. Knit X stitches for a size and purl one stitch. Now work row 44. And congratulations, you have completed one cable pattern. For size S, I will repeat rows 37 to 44 one more time, giving me a total of 52 rows or two cable patterns. After completing the final row of the cable pattern, let's work the last row for the shoulder seam. Here's how it goes for size S. Slip one stitch, knit twice, knit two stitches together until the last stitch. Pearl one stitch. And now I have 10 stitches. It's time to cast off and make sure to leave a long tail of approximately 70 cm or 27 inches for seaming the shoulder. 
Cast off the stitches, ensuring a loose and neat edge. Well done, we have completed the right front piece of our cardigan. In the next part of this video tutorial, we will continue working on the remaining pieces. Let's now focus on the back piece of our cardigan. Slip the stitches in the middle from the scrap yarn back onto the needle. Be sure to attach a new yarn at the beginning on the right side, which is the end near the right front piece. We will work now X rows for each size in garter stitch. This means simply knit whole rows. Once you have completed the necessary number of rows, it's time to cast off. Now let's mark the shoulders and neckline. Take a marker or a piece of scrap yarn and place it after the first X stitches for your size. Then place another marker after the next X stitches. This will help us identify the shoulders and neckline later on. Well done! We have finished the back piece of our cardigan and marked the shoulders and neckline for easy reference. In the next part we will move on to the working on the left front piece. Now let's shift our focus on the left front piece of our cardigan. Begin by slipping the remaining stitches back onto the needle. Attach a new skein of yarn at the beginning of the right side, near the armpit, there you see the row worked with purl stitches. Remember, the left front piece mirrors the right front piece. We will work even to pattern back and forth on the needle. For row 37, as well as rows 39 and 41, the instructions remain the same. Let me guide you through row 37. Start by slipping one stitch knitwise, then knit X stitches for your size, Knit 8 stitches, purl 2 stitches, knit 3 stitches, And finally, purl one stitch. Rows 38, 40, 42 and 44 follow the same pattern. Let's focus on row 38. Begin by slipping one stitch knitwise, then knit five stitches. Purl 8 stitches, knit X stitches for your size, and purl 1 stitch. Now let's move on to the row 43, where we will work the cable stitch. Slip one stitch knitwise, knit X stitches for your size. Perform a cable for front. Perform a cable for back. Oh. 
a lot of stitches. Need three stitches and purl one stitch. Repeat rows 37 to 44 one more time until you reach the row 52 or complete two cable patterns. To create the shoulder seam, work the final row. How I am doing this for my size? Slip one stitch knitwise, knit two stitches together to the last stitch. And purl the last stitch. This will leave me the 10 stitches for my size. Once you have completed the left front piece, it's time to cast off, ensuring a neat edge. And remember to leave a long tail for seaming the shoulder. Fantastic job! You have successfully finished knitting the left front piece of our cardigan. To sew the shoulder seams, you can use the long tail that you left after casting off the stitches. Alternatively, you can attach a separate piece of yarn from the outer edge of the shoulder. I recommend starting from the outer edge of the shoulder and working your way towards the neck. This will allow you to have better control over the size of the neckline and make adjustments if needed. Begin by running the yarn through the side stitches of the front piece and V-shaped stitches from the back piece, or simply through both side edge stitches. Use your fingers to locate the stitches and guide the yarn through. Continue to the neckline marker. Repeat the same process on the other side. Before moving on to the sleeves, it's a good idea to try on the cardigan. Take a moment to check the neckline. If it looks too narrow or wide, you can make adjustments by opening or closing a few stitches on each side of the shoulder seam near the neck. Make sure to make both shoulders the same for a balanced look. Take your time with this step to ensure a perfect fit and neckline that suits your preference. Great work! We have now completed sewing the shoulder seams and made any necessary adjustments to the neckline. Now let's move on to the sleeves. Sleeves are worked back and forth and will be sewn together to finish. To begin, cast on stitches for your size. Remember, we won't be drawing in the round, so keep the stitches in a straight line. For rows 1, 3 and 5 on the right side, we will follow this pattern. Slip one stitch knitwise, knit x stitches for your size. Knit 8 stitches, cable pattern. Knit 
need x stitches for a size again. And purl one stitch. On the wrong side for rows 2, 4, 6 and 8 we will follow this pattern. Slip one stitch knit twice, knit x stitches for a size, purl 8 stitches, Knit X stitches, and purl one stitch. Now, for the row 7 on the right side, we will work a cable stitch. Follow this pattern. Slip one stitch knitwise. Knit X stitches for a size. Perform a cable for front. Perform a cable for back. Need X stitches for a size. And purl one stitch. Repeat these eight rows, which make one cable pattern, a total of four times. This will give us a total of 40 rows. However, you can continue until the sleeve reaches your desired length. Keep in mind that the ribbing at the end will add an additional 5 cm or 2 inches. On row 41, which is the right side, we will work a decrease. I need two stitches together and uh, this will leave me the 12 stitches for my size. Next, we will work a one by one rib for four rows, which is a total of 45 rows. If you have an even number of stitches, knit two stitches together for the first two stitches, and then continue with knit one, purl one until the end. Finally, cast off the stitches loosely. Let's assemble the completed sleeve. Pin with a piece of yarn the center of the sleeve and two bottom edges to the center of the bottom of the armhole.
Try on the cardigan to ensure the sleeve length is just right. If the sleeve is too long or too short, you can unravel the knitting to the decreasing row with knit two stitches together. Then decrease or add two four rows as needed until you reach the desired length. You can find a detailed explanation and demonstration in the video provided above. Add a piece of yarn, approximately 1 meter or 1 yard, to the center of the bottom of the armhole and run the yarn through the both side stitches. Seam all the way around the sleeve from the bottom, around the shoulder and back to the bottom. Then seam on the side of sleeve, begin from the armhole and sew up to the cuff. You can sew through the edge stitches or through the bump stitches as I do. Walk the other sleeve in the same way. Well done! We have completed both sleeves of our cardigan. Try on your new cardigan and admire your creation. If you are happy with how it looks and fits, it's time to weave the ends to give your cardigan a polished finish. If you carefully followed the instructions but find that your cardigan is too big or too small, don't worry, here are some steps that you can take to address the issue. First, double check your gauge. Make sure that your gauge matches the recommended gauge provided in the instructions, which is typically given as a measurement of stitches per 10 cm or 4 inch. If your gauge is off, it can greatly affect the size of the finished garment. If your gauge is correct, but the cardigan is still wrong size, you may need to unravel and knit again using a larger or smaller size. Adjusting the length. If you find that the body of the cardigan is too short, you can open the seams of the sleeves and shoulders and unravel the fabric before dividing it into the front and back pieces. This will give you an opportunity to add an additional cable pattern, either half or full, to increase the length of your desired measurement. 
armhole length. If the cardigan's armholes feel too short, you can also open the seams of the sleeves and shoulders and unravel the decreasing row. By adding two for additional rows, you can extend the armhole length to achieve a better fit. Sleeve length. For specific guidance on adjusting the sleeve length, I recommend referring to the video tutorial provided above. It will walk you through the necessary steps to modify the sleeve length to your preference. Remember, knitting is a journey and sometimes adjustments are necessary to achieve a perfect fit. Don't be discouraged if you need to unravel and start again. Many designers, including myself, unravel their work multiple times to ensure the best outcome. I hope you won't need to use this troubleshooting information, but it's always helpful to know that there are solutions available. To view the ends, I recommend using a regular felting needle, a medium or fine gauge. Once you have woven all the ends, give your cardigan a final inspection to ensure everything is neat and tidy. Congratulations! You have completed your cable knit cardigan and created a beautiful masterpiece. Wear it with pride and enjoy the warmth it brings to your wardrobe. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye-bye!